that with a dividend yield of over 7%, is this telecommunications company, Bell Mobility, still a safe bet? Now, recently, Bell Mobility has taken a dramatic haircut, just shy of all-time lows. Now, this blue-chip dividend stock is a favorite among retirees, income investors, and it's been serving dividends like as if it's a casino. But the thing is, looking at the dividend payout ratio, ooh, it's making me nervous. Just in case you don't know me, my name is Tracy. I left engineering at 35 years old, and I run a multi-million dollar investment portfolio in my spare time. Now, today's video, I want to do a deep dive on Bell Mobility because I'm on a mission to help you become a better investor. Now, Bell Mobility is one of the leading names in telecommunications. It has one of the largest networks in Canada. From connecting calls to providing high-speed internet, they've been at it for decades. But its recent earnings hasn't painted a rosy picture. Even though revenue has been increasing over the past few years, its cash flow, its earnings have been going down primarily to do with this massive capital investments in its fiber rollout. And this has resulted in a massive drop in the stock price. But is there a silver lining? Maybe Bell Mobility has dropped so low that it's becoming an attractive buy. So the two metrics that I like to use is its dividend yield and its price per earnings metric. The dividend yield is simply just to screen, hey, has any dividend stock at an abnormally high yield? And Bell Mobility definitely fits this in the past 10 years. Now, the second metric I like to use is the price per earnings, which is simply telling you how expensive or how cheap it is relative to how much income it's collecting. It's like when you buy cherries in the supermarket, you know when the price per pound is very, very attractive. So looking at the price per earnings, you can see it's forward price per earnings, which is this projected price per earnings for next year, is in the lower end of the past 10 years which could be a signal that, yeah, it's becoming pretty attractive. But you're probably wondering, sure, it's looking attractive right now, but how safe is the future outlook for Bell Mobility? That's a great question. The diving into the outlook, ooh, the financials look like a mixed bag. Now, there are several red flags. The first one is its debt. With a debt of over $34 billion and a market cap just shy of over $54 billion, give or take whatever day you're looking at, ugh. The debt to market value ratio is not that attractive. And not only that, its debt has been massively increasing over the past few years. Now, the second red flag, there's a trend of dropping free cash flow and projected to drop over the upcoming years. But the big question is Bell Mobility's dividend safe. Now, Bell Mobility has been paying its dividends since 1949, which makes it a dividend aristocrat. In fact, it's been through COVID crashes, it's been through financial crisis, it's been through a lot of economic turmoil and survived and thrived during those occasions. But despite all that, when I look at its earnings payout ratio, it is looking super scary. Anything over 100% is like a no-no. So the other metric you could use with a capital intensive company like telecommunications, it's its cash flow payout ratio. Maybe it's generating enough cash flow that it's paying its dividends that way. So when you look at its cash flow payout ratio, it's also well over 100%, which makes me really, really nervous. The only way it's been increasing its dividends and could continue increasing its dividends is financing through its debt. Now, in one hand, you could think, sure, Bell Mobility has been through massive economic turmoil. It survived all those times and still increased its dividends. It could figure out how to get out of this hole. or you could be the other side say, ooh, with its trending cash flow drop, its increasing debt with rising interest rates and payout ratios well over 100%, a dividend cut is possible or a dividend hold. The worst case is it could cut its dividend and you know what happens when stocks cut their dividends. However, not everything is all grim. The CEO has done what it can to trim back expenses. It's done a layoff of 1,300 people, which is not ideal, but it grants Bell Mobility some more financial stability. It's also just trying to keep up with the rising population in Canada, which means a rising subscriber base, which is why it's making a massive investment in its fiber rollout with the hopes that it can increase its cash flow 
over the next couple of years. For now, it's using its debt to service the dividend payouts. But in the foreseeable future, it is projecting to stay on target between 65 to 75% of its free cash flow to pay out its dividends. So if you're comfortable with riding out the next few years and holding on dear life, but you think there's light at the end of the tunnel, well, maybe Bell Mobility could be an attractive investment for you. But for me, personally, I'm not making any investments in Bell Mobility. But again, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. So please do your own due diligence. If you like this analysis and you're also interested in Enbridge stock and whether it's dividend safe, check out this video up here. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.